Hey there, it's Sandy, and I am going to transform a non-winter stamp into a winter card. Inspired by Haley's card, she sent this in the summer in my call for cards. And I love the background colors, I love the outfit colors, and I'm going to transform a stamp doing that. These are the markers, this is the aftermath of the markers that I used. I decided not to put them on the screen because there were just too many, as you can see. But the whole point is not to share the colors necessarily, but it is to talk about the process of changing an outfit from one season into another. This girl is wearing a sweat jacket, so I have a leg up on trying to transform her into a winter outfit. If you have a stamp that you're using and you're inking it up, like a, a clear stamp or a rubber stamp or something, you can wipe the areas off that you want to transform. If you have a digital image and you have Photoshop and Photoshop skills, you can take that into Photoshop and erase some of those areas that you want to transform. I decided to show you how to do it when you don't do either one of those because you can. It's just a matter of thinking creatively and finding a gel pen or paint that's gonna work for white paint. Because when you're talking about winter cards, if you put fur on any outfit, it's gonna immediately transform it into something that looks wintry. It just is, that's the way life goes. And yes, I'm using my dark blue violets again for skin tones. It's gonna look really dark right now, but when it's done, I challenge you to look at it and tell me that it's the wrong colors, that she's too dark skinned. She's still gonna be very pale when it's all said and done. All right, let's get to the jacket. So fortunately, as I said, she's wearing a sweat jacket, so all I have to do is add the fur. If you have something with short sleeves, you're gonna to have to figure out how to cover that. Maybe make it a dark jacket so you don't see the sleeve lines, and then you can put fur around the wrists of them. But I'm not coloring really necessarily around the areas I'm gonna put the fur, but I realized what I wanted to do was to create something underneath that's gonna hide the fact there are lines there when I go to put the white in. Because a lot of times white's gonna show what's underneath. If you've used gel pens at all, which is what I use when I do white stuff, it sometimes will show through and it'll pick up color that's underneath. So I thought, let me just put some gray down there and that's gonna help to at least have some kind of unified thing rather than just that black line being the only part that shows up through it. I am going to do something at the end that's going to make this more white, but I wanted to see how white it remains by the time I get to the end and how much more work it needs. But I'm really just scribbling right over top of the area that I made in the gray. I just made fur, just lots of little furry edges to it. Make the inside, the interior part of it more dense, <clears throat> excuse me, and the outside more linear with those scribbly lines and you'll be good to go. Here I'm going around her elbow, so that pulls her elbow in front of the fur on the bottom of the jacket. Fairly simple way to transform any kind of an outfit. If you don't have a hood on it, you can add a hood to most outfits. You know, if you can see the area where a hood would be, you could also put a scarf on, a fuzzy scarf onto a character and be able to transform it that way by, by putting some, some other elements of fuzziness. If you can put any kind of a hat on or a hairband, that's another option for giving a character some sort of winterized outfit. Now, this girl is wearing a mini skirt and sandals. So we're gonna have a little bit of a challenge <laughs> trying to figure out what to do here. So I'm gonna give her really tall black boots and I'm gonna use the buckles that are already there, just color over the whole thing and making it black is one of those other ways that you can transform an outfit that didn't quite work. If it's got spaghetti straps and you cover it over with black and you give her a black shirt, you won't see the spaghetti straps anymore. And that's what I'm basically doing here with the boots. So I'm using a dark gray and then a really, really dark gray, or you can use a black for the shadow areas. I'm putting some fur around the top of the boots and then I'm gonna add some highlights onto the boots. So again, it's easier to add things to a stamp to make it wintry than it is to take a wintry stamp and put a bikini on it. <laughs> so I suppose you could put a bikini over top of the jacket. I'm not really sure that that would work on a beachy card, but nonetheless, at least we can transform stamps this way. 
I decided she was going to be wearing skinny jeans instead of having her poor legs bared because that just seemed like it would be a little bit too much in the cold winter for her to have nothing at all on her legs. I was considering doing some kind of like striped red and white stockings, but I didn't want her to look as though she was some sort of an elf either. Once I finished the background, yes, I did do the background without you. Sorry about that. I did do another layer on top of the white. So that allowed it to get a little bit brighter because the first layer had dried. You know how the color picks up from underneath? That dries and then you can go over top of that again. So if you're going over top of red sometimes, try a second layer and see if that works. There are a thousand different ways to do snow. I love doing big chunky snow because one, it goes faster, but two, it just looks more magical to me in some ways. Notice I did leave some glow around her phone. If you ever have a phone, that's a really great way to draw attention to it. I decided at the last minute to add some snow here at the bottom so that there would be an anchor for the bottom of the picture. And I suddenly realized that blue was not gonna work. There's nothing else blue in the picture. How could I pull them back in? Well, I switched over to a B60. It has a little purplish tint. And then I added some pinks into the blue as well so that I would end up getting purple in there that kind of goes with the background a little bit better. For the finished card, I trimmed down my panel so that it would be a little smaller than my card base and popped it on some dimensionals and I left some space that I can put a sentiment when I decide what it's going to be for. Is this going to be a Christmas card, a winter card, a hello card, or whatever? And I challenge you to go do this. Go take a stamp that's not a winter stamp and turn it into one and tag me on social media. I would love to see how you approach a project like this. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.